Hello, welcome to Otson Serie Match Day 26. Uh, Danny, really good news for Italian football is the only league uh, with seven teams in the last 16 round. It's very likely that Italy is going to have five teams next season in the Champions League. Well, hi Edu. As it stands, yes, we are top of the league, but now I think the difficult things begin because we need to defend that top position. Of course, today there are the draws, you know, Conference League, Europa League, and of course, in the Champions League, three games, two wins, one draw. So, yes, on we go. Bologna, who are in fifth, are dreaming they will be in the Champions League as it stands next season. Impressive uh, Roma's atmosphere to beat uh, Feyenoord in the penalty shootout. Uh, now it's time to talk about uh, everything in Italy. Danny, you have uh, Felipe Real okay. placing your job. Uh, hello oh, to oh. Rick from Canada in the middle of the night. Hello to everyone. So uh, don't forget, of course, to keep supporting us. Please tell your friends that we are here for you. Subscribe to the channel. And now let's go on with the show. Don't forget as well that we have an exclusive welcome bonus with one XBet. You have the link in the description and the promo code uh, get 130%. Not bad at all uh, with your welcome bonus. Well, Danny, you mentioned at the beginning Bologna playing on Friday against Verona. This is a very good game. Bologna fighting with Atalanta to finish in the top four, but perhaps uh, finishing in top five is enough to be in the Champions League next uh, season for the very first time for Bologna. They beat Lazio away for consecutive victories, really in form. Verona, we mentioned it in our previous video that they could give uh, Juventus a headache and indeed they drew taking twice the lead. First of all, hi to Eric, hi to Proj, and to everyone who's watching. Verona tonight, sorry, Bologna Verona tonight. So get on this bet quickly if you want to, because they, they kick off in a few hours. Well, Bologna, they're doing it in style. They're playing really well uh, by far alongside Inter and Atalanta, I would say, the three best teams in Italy. Uh, they play positive football, even if they go behind, they don't get the heads drop. And the one at uh, Lazio, Perhaps a little bit like I think that the draw would have been fairer. Lazio had a few chances, but you know, the goals that they manufactured, especially the second one, it was a beauty. From Zirkze won the last four league games, Bologna. The record is six, achieving 1967. So Tiago Motta is on to great thing. Only one defeat at home this season against Milan, 2 0 in the first game of the season. Since then, only wins and draw for Bologna, but more wins. The last one was a big one, 4 0 against Lecce. Verona, on the other hand, no wins in the last 12 away games. The last one was a nil nil at Monza, but they are young, they are combative. The likes of Floro Luncio, Noslin, Serdar, Suslov, they changed 12 players in January because um, they had some debts, they had to make some money. They made 40. 40 grand and you know credit to to Marco Baroni who last season did such a great job at Lecce saving them making them really really organized hard to break this Verona concede perhaps far too many goals but good quality up front and they can upset the odds if I look at the moment between Verona and Sassuolo I think Sassuolo are more in danger but bad omens for Verona when they play on Friday if you believe in these things only won two of the last six games on Friday but both against Bologna in 2022 and 2023. Uh, I think they're going to be goals. I can't think Bologna being too stingy at home, but careful because Verona might one. Over 2.25 goals, that's an Asian line, 192. Only two goals, you only lose half a stake. Well, Felipe is going for the under because uh, Bologna is lacking a proper number nine. Do you agree, Daniel? Hey, what is Dirk Z then? Is that mm. number nine? And his course, Man, and his score is is or, <laughs> yes. Well, uh, they are not the Arnaldo which you saw against Atletico. No, but yeah. uh, taking seriously, uh, Felipe, I think you're right. Then uh, uh, Zirze is a fantastic player, but he's not clinical enough in front of goals. And I do take your point for the amount of football that Bologna produces, you would expect them to score more goals. But lately, Orsolini be scoring. 
odd garden be scoring. So I think uh, you can't uh, really expect Bologna to win too many games by one nil. Three games on Saturday, all for the relegation battle, especially the first one, Sassuolo Empoli. You mentioned Sassuolo really in danger now with the same points as Verona. Uh, one win in 11 games uh, is pitiful. Only one point in the last five games. Uh, reports say that Dionisi could be sacked uh, if uh, Sassuolo don't get the three points against uh, Empoli. Empoli, two points only above relegation, but the, their form is way better than it with the new manager, five undefeated games. The miracle worker, Davide Nicola, we said it previously, he saved Salernitana, saved Cotone, and he's doing it again. Five games, no defeats, draws against Fiorentina and Juventus, so it was not an easy calendar. And he's already making history. No manager in the history of Empoli has been unbeaten for five games. Can they go six unbeaten? It's going to be tough because Sassuolo are desperate, but you know, the Empoli have only lost two of the last seven away games, one in Napoli and one in Salerno. Sassuolo only five points since December, and that's the lowest tally in Serie A alongside Frosinone and Atalanta. Only lost two of the last six games at home, Sassuolo, but one clean sheet all season. They concede an awful lot of goals. They do score a lot. If you look at the likes of Berardi, Pinamonti, Loriente, they are all in the top 13 for shots taken in Serie A. So they do produce a lot of football. They do produce a lot of attacks against Atalanta. Pinamonti missed not one, but two penalties because he had to retake it. And Carnesecchi said them both. So you could trust Sassuolo to score a game again, but I think it's very difficult that they're going to keep a clean sheet. A bit of trivia for you, 13 games in Serie A between these two games, two teams, there's never been a draw. So mm -hmm. that's the longest streak in Serie A without a draw. So you might want to go for a draw. Every now and then there will be a draw. And also last time uh, Empoli won back-to-back -back game away from home, they f defeated first Alernitana and then Sassuolo. Guess who they won the last away game against? Salernitana. So it could go either way. Both teams to score. 175. That's the bet for me. Was a 3 4 in the yes. um, uh, reverse fixture in Empoli. A screams draw to me <laughs> this game, okay. in words of Tom Rennie, to be honest. But uh, the stats are against it, as we could see in the Otspedia website. Uh, both teams to score for Felipe, uh, one all yeah. or Sassuolo to win. 2 1, a really important game. Uh, then uh, Salernitana. Monza, Salernitana, hopeless, seven points away from Sassuolo. Monza, perhaps, Danny, was the biggest win in Monza's history, a brief history in Serie A with that 4-2 in against uh, Milan. Could be, no? Well, last season they beat Juventus and Inter, both 1-0. But that was, yes, in terms of scoreline, biggest, 4-2. And it was so nice to see Adriano Galliani former Milan sporting director, celebrating, and now a Monza, celebrating is so widely, means so much to him, and that's why we love football. Of course, he's a Milan supporter, but Monza, yes, these, some people have said, well, they're not playing as well as they used to do last year, too many nil-nils, they haven't scored a lot, but I think they are absolutely fine, they will be saved, they will be mid-table, and from now on, probably Monza are going to win more games than losing them, you know, they're going to be they're going to be good to watch. I think they're well coached and they've got good attacking players there. Um, yes, I, we mentioned the fact that Salernitana and Monza have had problems scoring goals. Both teams have not scored in seven games this campaign. It's a negative record. This is the team that have not scored in, for more in Serie A. But Salernitana are pretty much desperate. No wins in the last six at home against Inter. They barely, barely touch the ball. That's the first real test for the new manager, Liberani, third manager of the season for Salernitana. I think uh, in the summer they gambled Salernitana. They saw last season numbers, Dia scoring 14 goals, Ochoa making miracles. They achieved so many draws last season, Salernitana, so things could have gone either way. Some of those draws perhaps were lucky, and if you look at the expected numbers goal from last season, Salernitana would have been relegated. So probably they thought the team was better than what actually was, but now very few teams in Europe can have as a centre-backs a Champions League winner and a Europa League winner. Unfortunately for Salernitana, these two players have got 71 years in two. I'm talking about Jerome Boate 
Boateng, the Champions League winner, and Fazio, the Europa League winner, and they're going to start against Monza. I think the pace of, of Colpani and Motta could really test them. I love the Asian handicap zero for the visitors, 180. If Monza draws, you get your money back. If they win, you win a very good price for an away win. Rick and Felipe agree with you. Going for Monza, draw no bet. Yes. Remember, if there is a draw, you get your money back. Even if you want to take more risk, Monza to win pays really well, uh, 2.5. And the uh, last game on Saturday is Genoa. Udinese, great season for uh, Genoa. They drew uh, at Napoli, but they were this close to get the win. We mentioned it in the previous video that they were very dangerous. It's only one defeat in the last uh, 10 games. Udinese trying to escape from relegation. Danny, three points uh, from that uh, bottom three. But they are also in good form in a positive run. Yes, so Udinese are uh, getting better. They do struggle to to recover points they only won three games this season all three of them to nil so when they concede a goal like last sunday against cagliari they score first then they concede it and they drop back a lot they haven't won any of the last five away matches udinese against teams on the right column of the table so really they do struggle to 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 get uh, uh, wins against teams that are in their own league strangely for udinese they won away at milan and at Juventus, but they do struggle against smaller teams. Genoa, on the other hand, only one defeat in the last 10 games. That was a 4-1 defeat against Atalanta, a game maybe where they deserved at least another uh, goal. But Genoa got more goal scorers in them, the Dudinese, the likes of uh, Gudmundsson, Retegi, of course, Malinowski, Messias, and at home, they are strong this season. They haven't really been trashed, apart from the 4-1 defeat against Fiorentina in match day, one unbeaten in 13 games, Udinese against Genoa. This is the longest unbeaten streak in Serie A for the Friulani. So they haven't lost much, but last four have been draws. Do you trust them to get a draw at Marassi? Not quite. I think Genoa could win it, but back it perhaps with an Asian handicap minus 0.25, mm -hmm. which pays 196. If they draw, you lose half a stake. If they win, you win. If you're not sure what all these Asian lines means, go and check on all the Oddspedia videos, the tutorials. Ed has done a great video on explaining everything about the Asian handicap. Go, yeah. go and watch it. Well, uh, Monza Dronovet was a good idea. Genoa, Asian handicap, in your case, uh, minus 0 0.25, or Dronovet could be another option in case there is a draw. You get your money back. Uh, good bets uh, so far, in my opinion, uh, in this uh, match day. On Sunday, we start with Juventus Frosinone, the team has switched off the old lady, La Vecchia Signora, two points in the last four games. I guess now they have to watch their backs. Uh, they are nine points away from the fifth spot instead of looking ahead and looking to Inter. Napoli and Atalanta are next, uh, Danny. So this is a must win against a team like Frosinone with only one win since November. Well, Juventus uh, has, has suffered a psychological backlash after losing the game at Inter. I, di at Inter. I didn't expect that. But as soon as they realized that they were not going to be able to win... Uh... Uh, to win the Scudetto, they yeah they drop back a lot. They stop scoring many goals. The defense is becoming more leaky. Only two po two points in the last four games, so no wins in the four games. To find five games with no wins, you need to go back to May 2019. But back then they had already won the Scudetto, so it's very unlikely for a Juventus, even if in the latest years, late years, they've been poor to go so long without a win. And now Allegri is thinking about changing the formation, perhaps playing with three strikers, with Carlos Alcaraz in behind. There's going to be no Danilo. Alexandro will play at the back. He's been criticized. He's been really poor uh, this season. He's going to leave at the end of the season. But yeah, Juventus do have issues. But of course, their objective, they always said, was going to be to finish in the top four. They need to try at least to hold into the second spot. Frosinone have already lost nine games against teams in the top two in Serie A. Aggregate score 25-1. So Sinone are a young side with three Juventus Loani, Caio Giorgi, Sule, Berencea. They did well in the league, 
back in January, in December, sorry, they managed to only lose 2-1. But since December, Frosinone have lost nine games, same as Salernitana, and they've got the worst defense since December. Only since December, they conceded 31 goals. 40% of Frosinone games over 3.5 goals. Now, uh, can they go there and keep it tight? Can they go there and win it? Frosinone, no chance for me. They already lost there in the Coppa Italia. But I don't believe Juventus are in such a good form. They're going to put three or four past Frosinone. I love the Asian handicap plus 1.5 for the visitors. That plays 190, which doesn't mean they're going to win the game. They could lose with one goal margin, 1-0, one 2-1 two one maybe, and you still win your stake. Of course, if Juventus wins 2-0, 3-0, two nil, three, two nil, three nil, you do lose your stake. It's a risky, I know, but the only value I can find, really, I can't think Juventus scoring in both fouls, so Juventus has an handicap minus two. I don't see it. No, it's not a great uh, game to bet uh, this one. Uh, next one, <laughs> this one I like it. Uh, Cagliari, Napoli, Danny, perhaps I watch uh, on Wednesday one of the worst Champions League uh, ties, <laughs> games in the uh, knockout stages between Napoli and Barcelona. I think both were pitiful, was a disaster football game. Uh, Nato Napoli, as we know, they got rid of uh, Matt Sarri. Now they have a new manager without time to prepare. Francesco Calzona, we saw Cravacelli and Osimen uh, retiring from the pitch, uh, perhaps uh, with physical problems uh, and Danny could be a good option here to back uh, Cagliari to be honest uh, I, I won't put my money on Napoli they are so bad well, so unless bad. they have a unless they have a new manager bounce well he worked with Mazzari because they won the first game when Mazzari was in charge why not trusting them with Calzona but going back to that game against Barcelona I think Napoli couldn't do anything more than what they did they were dominated for 70 minutes but if the game was poor and it was played as low rhythm I think it's Barcelona's fault I love Xavi's at the end of the game he said if there was a team that deserved to win it was Barcelona well you go and look at the XG Napoli was higher so in the end, Napoli he finished. He loves uh, big data, Danny. He said. Uh, well, he hasn't uh, watched. He has, he has a red top of the red with uh, the big data, you know. Yes, especially especially his fifty-one goals conceded. That, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they bowed well. But yeah, we, I, I totally agree with Alvaro Romeo. We talk about Barcelona length in our Champions League video. They have no method, really. Uh, did they deserve to win Barcelona? Maybe, but you know, at the end, I think Napoli finished strongly and credit to Calzona. Wally got the job 48 hours before. He, he, he made the difficult changes in the end. He took off Cravascelli, who was having a poor day. He put on Traoré and Lindstrom. They inspired the goal. Osiman came back from the first minute. He scored. And that's uh, Napoli's hope that he now was a man with only three, four months left staying in Napoli, because I'm sure he's going to leave at the end of the season, wants to finish on a high. Look, Napoli have been dreadful this season in Serie A, minus 29 points compared to last year, and that's the worst record for champions after 24 matches. So they are the worst champions ever. But can they get at least into the top seven. They haven't scored in the last five away games. Now they play a Cagliari who lost the last two at home after six games unbeaten. They finish strongly Cagliari at Udine. Maybe they could have got the three points there. I love this odds. I mean, now it's 192. Last time I checked, Napoli win was 190. On paper, Napoli are a different class from Cagliari. So these are great odds. Maybe, I mean, I go for Napoli win here. I, th I think they win it. But perhaps he want to back uh, over 2.5 goals at both to score. That's a good one. Napoli haven't kept many clean sheets this season, really. But I do love Napoli win. It's, I mean, it's, it's such an unbelievable odds for the team that won the Scudetto only six months ago. Well, away from home, they are not that bad. Eh? They are fifth in the away no, standings. No, Napoli, no. they have uh, even more problems at the Maradona. No, 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 no. Uh, handsome fights is going for Napoli win, Black Adam okay. for a nation handicap plus 1.5 for Cagliari, double chance perhaps for Cagliari, Felipe is telling us really good odds uh, in this uh, Cagliari Napoli. Next one is Lecce Inter, uh, Inter on the other hand they looked uh, unstoppable, I really like them on Tuesday, perhaps they deserve even more goals against uh, Atletico de Madrid, Is nine consecutive wins, I guess Danny, the concerning news uh, were the injury of uh, Turam and now they are thinking perhaps not even in this game against Lecce they have Atalanta in midweek but in that clash at the Metropolitano because the tie is pretty much alive. 
Oh, so absolutely. It is alive. The only downfall to Inter is that they didn't score more goals against Atletico. I think Atletico were there for the taking, especially in the second half. But apart from that, it was a very good display from Inter. Look, they demonstrate such a composure, such a calmness, but at the same time, they know where to go for it that a few years ago they would not have had. So it's it's credit to Inzaghi and to the players for sticking to it. And you can tell the stronger than last season, because now when the Inzaghi makes the substitutions and he brings in the likes of Danfres, Di Marco, uh, sorry, Di Marco, Augusto, Frattesi, they do make a difference, really. And the team level doesn't drop. Last season, with Gosens, with Gagliardini, there was a sensible loss in quality and intensity. But now, in Serie A, this could be tricky, okay? Why, 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 why tricky? Lecce only won four games all season. Because Lecce are a very organized side, are a side, are a side that uh, attacks quite a lot, uh, despite their uh, position in the table, they are uh, ninth for shots in Serie A, uh, Lecce. Uh, they got uh, Banda, who's the fifth for dribbles completed, and Krstovic, the striker, seven for shots in Serie A. They do attack. Yes, they perhaps should have conceded more goals, looking at big data, but it's not a team afraid to push uh, top teams uh, to the limit. And they're very organized, as I mentioned, especially at home at the Via del Mare. They drew against Milan beat Lazio, beat Fiorentina, and the against Juventus, they lost 3-0, but the first half was nil-nil, and Juventus had issues to unlock them. Inter, as we mentioned, they are extraordinary, 63 points, only one season, 2006-2017, 2006-2007, sorry, they collected more points after 24 games, uh, the numbers, as I said, are incredible, nine consecutive wins in 2024, uh, they score in 19 consecutive away games, never scored in 20, so they could make history, but they're going to do turnover, as they should do. Turam is injured, so Arnautovic is there ready to, to, to score more goals after the couple that he missed against uh, Atletico. They're going to make turnover, for sure, because that game at the, on the 13th of March at the Vanda Metropolitano is the ga- now yeah. is the game of the season, although Inter, of course, still need to negotiate Serie A. And as you mentioned, Atalanta coming on, um, on Wednesday. You can see the, the odds. First half, 1x, 180. Again, it is risky, but, but I had a look. Every time Inter played in the Champions League, the following game... There are some big wins, 3-0 at Napoli, 2-0 at Lazio after Champions League games, but they only scored more than one goal in the first half, only once. So normally the first half are low scoring affairs. Big data stats, you need to read into them and see who do they play, how have they done afterwards, how much to know they done. I think I know Inter better than anyone else. You can trust me, I don't think they're going to win largely here and initially it's going to be difficult well um i like uh, the bet a uh, big turnover probably for inter thinking already in that big game at the metropolitano great game for inter great proposal from uh, simone inzaghi yeah. Yeah. on tuesday was the team uh, that wanted to win that game uh, and on wednesday they play atalanta the big game on sunday is Milan, Atalanta, both teams uh, will be in the pot of the Europa League. Uh, great goal scored by Leao against uh, Ran Dani uh, for Milan. They lost to Monza, but at home, six wins and one draw in the last seven games. Atalanta, one of the most informed teams in uh, Serie A, is eight wins in the last ten games. Where should we go here? Perhaps uh, lots of goals? Yes, both to score and over 2.5 goals, which has happened in an awful lot of Milan games recently. 52 games of Milan in Serie A have been over 3.5 goals. At the week, uh, on first day, another over 3.5 goals are run. Three goals scored in the first leg against run. They do score goals. They do concede goals in Serie A. Uh, only, um, only they are the 11th or 10th defense of Serie A. They concede the same amount of goals as Genoa, 31 goals. Most of them, to be fair, 
uh, away uh, from home. But this is a tie that Milan has already lost twice this season. 3-2 in Bergamo in December. Since then, only another defeat, which was the one against Monza, 4-2. But they also lost in Coppa Italia in January 2-1 at the San Siro. Atalanta deserved perhaps they should have more goals. I don't understand why Milan are favorites here. I think Atalanta's odds are way, way too higher for the way they are playing. Look, in the last five games, Atalanta are flying, five consecutive wins, 15 points, of course, 17 goals scored, as many as in the previous in the previous 11, and conceded two. Uh, luckily or unluckily for Atalanta, next Wednesday, they need to go to San Siro again to play against Inter. Gasperini is not happy about it, but he's never happy. He complains all the time. The truth is that uh, He's got a lot of attacking options now with the return of Toure from injury, Skamak as well. Lukman is still a doubt, but Kup Miners is fully fit. And of course, all eyes are going to be on Charles Le Catelier. Last season, the biggest flop at Milan, but now uh, four goals and two assists in the last six. But do not discard a goal from Pulisic, who's also been really, really good this season. And we saw also Leao can score goals as well and beautiful other ones he did against Ran. Uh, for me, Atalanta doesn't lose this one. I don't fully back them with the win. I like the Asian Andica plus 0 0.25, 184. If they draw, you win Alpha State. Well, uh, goals and goals. I think we should expect a really good game here. Also, our audience uh, are going for goals. Uh, let's see which teams they get in uh, the Europa League uh, draw. Great season eh, for uh, Atalanta. Well, and for Monday, we have two games, the two teams in the Capital Roma Torino. Also, Roma will be in the draw after beating Feyenoord in the penalty shootout with Svilar as a hero, the goalkeeper chosen by De Rossi. Great manager so far, De Rossi. Danny, he woke up uh, the team after the depression under Mourinho. Torino also played on Thursday, lost to Lazio. Uh, only nine goals scored away from home. Torino, Danny. Very low tally. Yes, Torino should score more for the quality they have. We have seen it many times. And the one against Lazio was the first defeat after six matches unbeaten. But to be fair, they didn't deserve to lose that game uh, yesterday against Lazio. They had a lot of chances, hit the post in the first half. Then uh, they missed a couple. And then Lazio found two goals, two individual pieces of brilliance in the second half. But really, they should have got at least a point. The manager, Yuri, said he went to bed happy. Well, well, I mean, he lost. Not sure he's going to stay until the end of the season because really Torino seems unable to climb up the table. They get up to nine and then they don't continue being winning. Uh, but, you know, uh, they still, uh, before yesterday, they still had Italy's fair de best defense, also according to big data. Uh, but, yes, the lowest number of over 2.5 goals, only seven, and away from home, yeah, they score far too little. They only lost one of the last four away from home, uh, Torino. Reverse fixtures was 1-1. One, one. Roma, uh, they continue to hold an amazing record at the Olimpico in knockout European competitions, as we mentioned in the Europa League video. So for the next one, of course, I'm going to rephrase that again. It was a safe bet, Roma, to qualify. It oui. landed. That's all it matters for you. If you bet on it, how it happened, doesn't matter. I think in the 210 minutes, Roma were the better teams compared to Feyenoord. And they managed to equalize 10 minutes after conceding the first goal. That's all it matters. All the rest, um, nearly, it, it doesn't matter in the end. It's a, one, a win, is a win, a qualification, is a qualification. But at the Olimpico, Roma have scored in the last 28 matches in all competitions. And with the Rossi, have scored 15 in the last seven. Now the manager is making the difficult decision, the hard decision. That's what he needs to do. Svila in goal, in goal was one of them, but also giving back a place to Lorenzo Pellegrini. Four goals for Roma since Roma changed the manager. The issue for them is they do concede far too many goals still, even with a back four, only one clean sheet in the last six in all competition. Um, it's a cliche, I know, and people hate it when I say it, but I think they're going to be tired. After 120 minutes on a Thursday, even if they play on a Monday, I think they're going to have issues also because Lukaku played the entire game. Dybala played more than 90 minutes. They have to make changes. I trust Torino to be solid initially, at, at least initially. 
Asian handicap plus 0 0.25 for Torino, 175 in the first half. So if they win the first half, you win. If they draw the first half, you still win. Both to score is also another one I like. Mm, Felipe is going for an under. I really like it. I can see a one nil victory or something like this uh, for Roma. Hello, Mohamed from Tomlet. Somalia. Well, when uh, Lukaku missed that penalty in the penalty <laughs> shootout, the, <laughs> the stats yeah. for Roma to qualify was on the brink to fail. But uh, at the end, uh, Svilar was the hero and what a last penalty, by the way, scored by Thieliski, Thaleski um, to qualify Thaleski. Roma to <laughs> the next round. Uh, and also two other teams uh, playing in Europe on Monday, Fiorentina. Lazio. Lazio won away, back-to-back -back wins uh, away from home for uh, Lazio, defeating Torino, but at home. Lost to Bologna, I guess the eyes are also in the cup. Long term, Danny, and also in that uh, game against uh, Bayern Munich in crisis. Now Lazio fans could see uh, could be hopeful to qualify for the Champions League quarterfinals. Fiorentina, Danny, not in great form no. lately. It's only one win in the last seven Serie A games. Yeah, plus that defeat in the Super Cup semi-final against Napoli, and that makes only one win in 2024. Uh, Beltran is keeping them afloat, is keeping them alive against Empoli. The usual mistakes, take the lead, can control the game, concedes an avoidable goal. Um, they should start scoring more goals lately, Fiorentina, because Nico Gonzalez is back to fitness. They've added Belotti, Belotti to the forward line. They score at home in seven of the last nine games. It's very unlikely Fiorentina games are low uh, scoring. The reverse fixture was, they finished 1-0 for Lazio. Lazio, we mentioned before, are becoming the masters of tight margins. They won a lot of games this season, 1-0, 2-0, perhaps didn't fully deserving for sure the win against Torino was very large. Now let's see how they react because that's the second week in a row that Lazio plays every three days because obviously they played Bayern Munich before. I don't think they got the squad depth to sustain that really and they struggle a lot in Serie A when they were still in the group stages of the Champions League. Now they're only minus four points from a Champions League spot. I don't think they will qualify, but probably will make the Europa League. Three of the last four away from home for Lazio have been over 2.5 goals and both to score. Lazio have always scored in the last say, six, sorry, six games on the road. Uh, there are going to be changes. I don't think Fiorentina got a very strong defense. They probably score one, but they will probably concede. Uh, both teams to score. 191. I like it. So, yeah, go for it. Okay, Black Adam is going for Lazio plus one. And they are the underdog. Um, well done, good games, uh, great performance by the Italian teams in Europe. Great performance by Danny Fisichella in our YouTube channel. <laughs> Tell us your safe bet for this weekend. My safe bet is Genoa draw no bet 160. So if they draw, you get your money back. And talking about my tips, uh, guys, I invite you to join the tipster competitions on the Oddspedia website. There is a monthly competition. There's a yearly competition. You can win real money. You can submit your tips. Submitting your tips is absolutely free. I do, I start doing it as well. I think yeah. it's so much fun. Nice. Yes, so I am there. You can see how I'm doing and what I do. Every single tip I give you on these shows, Europa League and Champions League, I submit it exactly the same. So it's Great. absolutely transparent. You can see if I'm doing at the moment, I'm slightly losing, but I've only started a week ago. So I mean, maybe maybe before I was in it, but let, let's forget about it. So you will see how I'm doing, follow my tips and catch up with that. Exactly. It's, it's, a fun, it's a fantastic way to be on top. Have fun as well. I mean, it's all about having fun. Nice. You can follow Danny Fisichella's profile on uh, Oddspedia and uh, see his tips. Uh, we will have a competition, of course, for the Euros eh? in June, July. Danny, and your ACA? Uh, my ACA is uh, three selections. Genoa is an handicap zero. Milan, Atalanta, over three goals. Roma, Torino, double chance. X2, total odds, 6.94. Ooh, Torino double chance, huh? Eh? That's a risky one. 
But you have to you have to try. As I said, in Mayaka, one with low odds, win with medium odds, and one with odds higher. Actually, the highest odds are on Milan Atalanta over three goals. But there is the possibility of a push. Yeah. So obviously, the Torino double chance is the risky one. But you have to go for it. This sometimes in these things with the Aka, the the odds are six point ninety four. Not necessarily you have to place one unit so high the odds you can place half a unit a third of a unit so i mean it's up to you really how you want to play it all right uh, danny fisichella thank you thanks everyone for watching have a great weekend and see you next week bye bye thank you bye bye